hello everyone so in this session i am going to discuss a very important topic that is pathologic calcification so before starting the topic as usual let's have a look on the university exam questions which usually comes from this topic from this topic i have never seen uh, some long question coming from this topic usually short questions come from pathologic calcification so the questions can be like this uh you can be asked to define pathologic calcification along with its type to describe the types or you can be specifically asked one of the type of the pathologic calcification either dystrophic or metastatic along with its pathogenesis and the causes and diagrams so basically you should know what is pathologic calcification along with its two types pathogenesis examples everything so let me start you know in human body where calcium is present in human body calcium is present only at two places number 1 tit human teeth the enamel of the teeth and number 2 the bones the human bones so bones and the enamel of the teeth are only two organs where calcium is present in human body if calcium is present at any other organ apart from these two it is pathologic it is not normal and that is the definition of pathologic calcification so can you define pathologic calcification for me what is it yes it is deposition of calcium salts in any tissue apart from osteoid that is bone and apart from enamel of the teeth so apart from these two organs the enamel of the teeth and the osteoid of the bone if calcium is present in any other organ it is known as pathologic or heterotrophic calcification so we can say it is abnormal deposition of the calcium along with some other salts like iron magnesium and some mineral salts in any tissue other than the bone and the teeth so you got the definition basically teeth or bone ke alawa kahin bhi calcium deposition hai so it is known as pathologic calcification coming on the types there are two types of pathologic calcification the dystrophic and the metastatic so these are the basic two types of pathologic calcification now you must understand the differences between them it is must to understand very 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 important the differences between dystrophic and metastatic calcification to understand the differences let's have a look on this diagram i have drawn this beautiful diagram for you can you see the two blood vessels here this is one of the blood vessel this is another blood vessel you can see the two blood vessels right here you can appreciate in the blood you can see the calcium is present in the blood when the calcium leaves the blood and get deposited in the tissue it is known as calcification now let's talk about the two type of calcification one by one let's talk about dystrophic calcification here the problem is that the tissue is dead and degenerated if in human body any dead and degenerated tissue is present the calcium will leave the blood and get deposited in dead and degenerated tissue and such calcification is known as dystrophic calcification here there is no problem in the calcium level in the blood the calcium level in the blood is normal normal calcium level in the blood there is no problem in the calcium metabolism right but the problem is in the tissue the tissue is either dead or degenerated i will give you a list of the dead and degenerated tissue wait a while right in the second diagram you can see the tissue is absolutely normal absolutely healthy there is no problem in the tissue but the problem is in the calcium level in the blood in the blood there is hypercalcemia the calcium levels in the blood are more than normal and here also the calcium level which are more in the blood they will leave the blood and get deposited in the tissue such calcification is known as metastatic calcification i guess everyone got what is the point so in dystrophic calcification the problem is in the tissue the tissue is dead and degenerated but the calcium levels in the blood are normal but in metastatic calcification the problem is not in the tissue the tissue is healthy but the problem is in the calcium level in the blood the calcium level in the blood is more so calcium metabolism is abnormal compare the tissue in the both compare the calcium level in the blue both now you can define what is dystrophic what is metastatic always learn d for d dystrophic dead and degenerated you will never forget so can you tell me the differences between the two now yes so in dystrophic calcification the calcium is deposited in dead and degenerated tissue but in metastatic calcification the calcium get deposited in normal healthy tissue in dystrophic calcification the calcium metabolism is normal so calcium level in the blood is normal so these two things are normal but in metastatic the tissue is normal but the calcium metabolism is deranged that's why there is hypercalcemia why the person is having hypercalcemia here because 
the calcium metabolism is deranged right so that is the basic differences between the two types of the calcification now let's see the differences in detail between them so let's start the first calcification dystrophic calcification as i have told you d for d so it occurs in dead and degenerated tissue and there is no hypercalcemia in the blood in the blood the calcium levels are normal the calcium metabolism is normal now you will ask me why it happens what is the pathogenesis what is the problem so the problem is shown in the form of the flow chart to understand this flow chart again see this diagram can you see this is dead and degenerated tissue it is a cell the cell is dead when the cell is the dead it burst out you know it is necrotic it is burst out so when the cell is dead and degenerated it burst out the cell membrane contain phospholipid phospholipid it burst out right and an enzyme phospholipase acts on this phospholipid and convert it into phosphate so basically dead and degenerated tissue contained contains abundant of phosphate you got my point the dead and degenerated tissue contains abundant of phosphate because when the tissue is dead the cell burst out the cell membrane of the bursted cell contain phospholipid which is acted by the phospholipase enzyme and phospholipase enzyme acts on the phospholipid and phospho, phospho, uh, phosphate is liberated so this abundant of phosphate is present in dead and de degenerated tissue you know now calcium loves phosphate so when this calcium was passing here from the uh, in the blood vessel from the dead and degenerated tissue it just leave the blood and come in the dead and degenerated tissue it forms a bond with the phosphate and forms calcium phosphate calcium and phosphate are the best friends you know wherever phosphate is present calcium will come wherever calcium is present phosphate will come so in the dead and degenerated tissue what is the problem the problem is that abundant of phosphate is present so calcium will leave the blood and get deposited and form calcium phosphate this is the pathogenesis now please say so in the dead and degenerated tissue the cell membrane is bursted the cell membrane is damaged so phospholipid is coming out from the dead and degenerated tissue so the phosphatase enzyme acts on the phospholipid and abundant of phosphate is generated so dead tissue contains abundant of phosphate so calcium will leave the blood bind with the phosphate and form calcium phosphate this is the mechanism or pathogenesis i hope you got it right that is about the dystrophic calcification what are the sites now in the sites tell me two list tell me an example of dead tissue and tell me the examples of degenerated tissue in the dead tissue the examples of like caseous necrosis in tb dead parasites can be present in the body human body fat necrosis infarct you know thrombi hematoma these all are coagulative necrosis in the degenerated tissue you can say atherosclerosis monkeyberg sclerosis is an example of degenerated tissue in the media of the blood vessel damaged heart walls infected lymph nodes degenerating tumors so these are the examples of dead and degenerated tissue i hope you got it right now coming on the second type of calcification that is metastatic calcification we know in metastatic calcification there is no problem with the tissue the tissue is absolutely normal and healthy but the problem is in the metabolism of the calcium the calcium metabolism is deranged that's why in the blood there is more calcium level which is known as hypercalcemia right so that is known as metastatic what is the pathogenesis here you will say ma'am here the tissue is absolutely normal you are saying the tissue is normal then why the cal it doesn't have excessive of phosphate here the tissue was having excessive of phosphate the dead tissue that's why calcium was leaving the blood and coming here but here the tissue is normal there is no excessive phosphate then why the calcium is leaving the blood and coming here what is the problem here the problem here the tissue in the human body which lose acid any cell which lose acid so from inside the cell the cytoplasm have alkaline environment so any tissue which is having alkaline ph in the body so that precipitates calcium calcium loves alkaline medium calcium loves alkaline medium so wherever in the human body calcium finds alkaline medium and the blood calcium levels are more calcium just leave the blood and get deposited in the alkaline medium get precipitated in the alkaline medium and this is the reason for calcification here so any organ in human body i will tell you the list of the organs which loses acid so which loses acid that will have an alkaline ph and alkaline ph is susceptible for the calcification so you can see the difference between the two why calcification occurs in dystrophic calcification the reason is excessive phosphate and why calcification occurs in metastatic calcification the reason is alkaline ph 
so the reason for the two dippers the pathogenesis for the two dippers draw the two flow charts along with the two diagrams right you got my point so that is the reason so can you tell me the uh, sites in human body having alkaline ph having alkaline ph so i will tell you the list the list is in front of you in the kidney it is basement membrane and tubules in the in the lungs it is pulmonary veins only pulmonary veins alveolar wall of the lung so this is also lung this is also lung cornea and conjunctiva of the eye in the stomach it's gastric mucosa right you know in the stomach this is the stomach the parietal cells of the stomach they lose hcl they form hcl so they secrete hcl in the lumen so that's why their cytoplasm is alkaline because they are losing acid that's why from inside they are alkaline environment so that is the gastric mucosa you got my point synovium of the joint systemic arteries and tendons so joint synovium tendons systemic artery pulmonary vein lung alveolar wall cornea conjunctiva and kidney these are the tissues in human body which are alkaline that's why they are susceptible for metastatic calcification but metastatic calcification can't happen if the blood don't have hypercalcemia so can you tell me the reasons for hypercalcemia how many reasons can you tell me for hypercalcemia why calcium level in the blood will be more because the calcium level depends on two things parathyroid hormone and vitamin d if any of them will be more the calcium absorption will be more vitamin d as well as parath hormone helps in calcium absorption if the person have hyperparathyroidism the calcium in the blood will be more if the person have hypervitaminosis d then also the the person will have hypercalcemia in the blood or certain neoplasms are there in which hypercalcemia is there so for hypercalcemia there can be three causes hyperparathyroidism hypervitaminosis d and certain neoplasm you got my point so that is the thing now whether it is dystrophic calcification or whether it is metastatic calcification the gross and microscopic appearance of both is same let me discuss the gross the gross is always chalky white calcium appears chalky white and if you feel it you will have a stony gritty feeling have you have you ever feel sand in your hand in your fingers the sand it is a gritty you know the stony hard feeling small small gritty so the calcium is like chalky white in appearance and it is having a gritty feeling can you see in the diagram you can see the heart balls it is a tricuspid ball in the tricuspid ball i can see this chalky white in the bicuspid ball here also i can see the chalky white deposits so these deposits are chalky white that is the gross so grossly the color of the calcium is chalky white and it is gritty in nature here also you can see the ovary and you can see the white white depositions the chalky white right microscopically if you cut and make a slide the color of the calcium is deep blue deep basophilic the calcium looks blue in color blue can you see the deep blue color wherever i will mark this deep blue color with yellow color here can you see this deep blue color here can you see this deep blue here also you can see the deep blue wherever you can find this deep blue color this deep blue color is calcium it is deeply basophilic sometimes the calcium arranged in the form of the layers around the central pearl it is known as samoma body here p is silent it is known as samoma body can you appreciate a central pearl and the calcification is in layers the concentric layers the laminated layers this is known as samoma body so what is samoma body samoma body is basically the deposition of calcium in layers in concentric layers it is known as samoma body right to see the cal calcium certain special stains are present example von cosa and alzirin red on von cosa the calcium looks black in color and alzirin red the calcium looks red in color this is von cosa can you see this is von cosa the calcium looks black in color so the blue color on hne get converted into black so the significance it is absolutely harmless only thing the elasticity of the tissue is lost wherever calcification is there so that's all about the calcification what we learned we learned what is pathologic calcification so it is deposition of calcium in any organ of human body except the bone and the teeth it is pathologic we have learned the two types of the calcification the dystrophic calcification and the metastatic calcification we have seen the differences between them so basically d for d in dystrophic calcification the tissue is abnormal the tissue is dead and the tissue is degenerated but in metastatic the tissue is normal the tissue is normal and healthy 
what is the problem in metastatic the calcium metabolism is deranged it is abnormal and the person is having hypercalcemia but here calcium levels are normal in blood right so you can see what is normal in the two what is abnormal in the two right you can compare you can compare you can tell me a list of the dead and degenerated tissue and you can tell me the list of the tissue where the body is having alkaline ph which is susceptible for metastatic calcification so we have seen the pathogenesis of the two in the pathogenesis we have learned dystrophic calcification is occurring in dead and degenerated tissue because they have excessive phosphate in them and metastatic calcification occurs in the tissue which have alkaline ph in them we have seen the flow chart we have seen the diagrams so we have seen the differences so that's all about it the gross microscopy is over now let's have a look again on the university exam questions from this topic what is pathologic calcification can you tell the definition can you tell the two types and describe them can you tell me everything about dystrophic calcification its pathogenesis its causes its diagram the same for the metastatic calcification yes you can tell me everything now before ending the session i would like to ask you two questions please write down the answer in the comment box right now right i'm not going to tell you the answers now i will tell you the answers in the comment only so what is true about dystrophic calcification read the four options this is question number one can you tell me the answer what is true about dystrophic calcification see the four option does it occur in normal tissue does it occur in dead and degenerative tissue does here the calcium metabolism is deranged or here hypercalcemia occurs what is true only one of them is true for dystrophic calcification tell me whether a b c d what is true about the dystrophic calcification right now question number two in question number two i am asking the same question for metastatic calcification what is true about metastatic calcification see the four options so does it occur in dead tissue does it occur in degenerated tissue what is true does here the calcium metabolism is normal or here the calcium metabolism metabolism is deranged so what is true about the metastatic calcification a b c d write down your answer in the chat box so i want two answers in the chat box what is the answer of question number one what is the answer of question number two question number one is about dystrophic calcification see the options again and question number two is about metastatic calcification see the options again so that's all about pathologic calcification if you like the session don't forget to click on the like button before you leave please share the link with all your friends colleagues share the link on your batch groups and please subscribe our youtube channel if you want to get notifications further and press the bell icon so thank you very much stay tuned for further sessions bye bye and you can write down your topic on demand in the comment section so any topic in pathology pharmacology and microbiology you find difficult and you are a second prof student and if you are studying throughout the uh, globe and you want any topic to be taken by me in the free sessions in the youtube kindly let me know in the comment box thank you bye bye study hard all the best